This time we are getting Alan the lifeboat's mast prepared and ready to be mounted, and indeed also things that need to be mounted upon it. This is the sort of effortlessly YouTube dominating content that inspired Channel Wonderment member Paul to become our first top tier sign up, and he's been around ever since. Cheers Paul. You join me today atop Allen, and this is the previously installed uh, brace for the mast. And what we're going to do today is try and put the whole thing together so Allen can be finally masted because this is a project which I began ages ago. In fact, the mast is nearly two years old now, but I've never really got to the point of actually putting it all together, assembling, and then putting the various bits of rig on top as well. I did dry assemble the mast's main brace last year, but now with the glass fibre embedded steel all nicely fared and painted, it's time for the big moment. The big moment being the permanent fixing with sealant and all that jazz. We have large M12 bolts and a thick plate of drilled steel the other side of the shell as a sort of custom made giant washer. The fiberglass shell is strong but spreading out the load seems like a friendly sort of thing to do. I used my favourite Bostick sealant and of course ensured the bonding area was rubbed back and keyed so we get a good bond and seal. Sticking it to paint would be somewhat obtuse and self defeating. I wasn't overly looking forward to the spanner tightening final act, as I knew from before it has to be done balancing high on top of the boat, at a weird angle, blind to the underside, which itself is recessed into the insulation foam. I did fumble and drop the steel plate on the underside and had to fetch it, although I don't think it hit anything important. So that was complete, and I will prime and paint the brace, the squeezed out sealant and the mast again I think, once I'm ready to call the mast structure complete. The Bostick sealant can be painted by the way. I can reach inside Alan's shell, which is helpful. Less helpful is that I can't reach inside a 3 inch wide stainless steel tube, and so fixing the other end of the brace onto the mast won't be as fun. I'm certain that you could, and I encourage many, but not all of you, to suggest methods to place permanent anchors into the tube. High strength rivets, welds, expansion anchors of some type, but I need to simply, yet robustly, attach a 45 degree bracket to the mast, and I want it to be removable. Fine, use large bolts, and I shall, but the inside shape of the tube makes it tough to get a flat surface to tighten against. I could distort the mast if I got it wrong, or merely end up with poor clamping strength. So I've dug out a length of stainless steel bar, and I'll use it as another custom internal washer. I'm leaving it quite long, as the longer it is, the less likely it is to want to rotate once inside. This won't solve everything, as the head of the bolt inside the tube and running through this bar is still free to rotate as you torque up the nut, but I do have an idea for that. The stainless steel drilling was as entertaining as normal, running up from 6, 8, 10 and then 12mm drill bits. I'm using cutting paste so you don't tell me off, and achieved a lifetime top 10 standard length of swarf. To cast aside any unjust accusations of amateurism, we finish off with a quick countersink and so I've moved directly to the assembly line. We all know how when using a hand drill, sometimes you can get holes half or even a whole millimetre out when all lined up in a stack of materials, but this time we got away with it. And you can see why I can't just reach inside all this way to plonk the bar and bolts through the mast holes, with absolutely no pre-planned repetition of content whatsoever. My job now is fitting up these various brackets. So this is a dummy, which is the equivalent of what's going to be up on the deck, which basically comes out at the 45 degree angle like this down to uh, where it fits onto the top of the driver's console. That's the, going to be the main brace. But here I have two pre-drilled pre -drilled holes. And what I need to do is make sure that when these bolts come through from the other side, from the inside, um, that as they're being tightened, they don't rotate. Otherwise we'll never actually get them tight. So what I want to try and do is actually fix these together onto this backing plate which then slides down and then these come through and then that means that this can't rotate because it'll get pulled tight against the inside of this tube and hopefully then means that without having to weld and therefore losing the ability to disassemble later on I should be able to hold thing, the whole thing together. I still need the bolts to stay in place and resist rotation so I'm going to use a ring of JB Weld Original beneath the bolt heads. The 5000 psi strength claim of this epoxy won't be specified for rotational forces, but we can still see another day what happens. If no good, I can perhaps find an extra long handled spanner. Then again, due to the access issues, I've duct taped the bar and bolts onto a metal ruler, and I hope this means I can accurately guide it in. 
It worked on the first attempt in the sort of satisfying manner you'd expect when successfully misusing measuring implements to insert bolts through pre-drilled holes. What a world Alan and I have created for ourselves. And whilst the epoxy cures, I'm using temporary nylock free nuts to hold the plate and bolts tight, as if it pulled away and then cured misshapen, my master plan would surely be in jeopardy. Some of you, in fact dozens of you, guessed in the community page comment section what these two new purchases were. Some of you got the one-way non-return valve right, but none of you got this and its purpose. It's an exhaust compression sleeve, but it's stainless, robust and has a 3 inch bore. So clearly I don't see an exhaust clamp. I see a right angle mast mount, obviously. You'll see why I need one of these in a moment. But first I've taken it to pieces and I'm coating it in a primer and top coat all in one paint as the stainlessness of a couple of component parts makes me suspicious and it's time to fetch the fiberglass box section. This will attach via a bracket to the collar thereby morphing into a spreader or cross tree or some nautical term I've yet to stumble across. Do not fear, it won't remain at 6 metres long as that will be a questionable aesthetic for Alan but I do need this span. I've chosen 1.5 metres, so about 5 feet as I need to mount two antennas, one at each end, one for VHF and one AIS. I've been warned off using a single antenna and a splitter module for this. Plus, this gives me an excuse to employ the angle grinder, sadly not with a shower of sparks and more with a cloud of stinking resin dust. Well, that wasn't hard, although the right angle brace manufacturing will be, and it's a reason why I've kept most of these old pieces of Alan's original interior along for the ride. They are mostly molded sections of lifeboat seating are for the most part solid fiberglass and without a nasty rotting wooden core and have all sorts of useful radiuses and shapes. Here I just needed a good wadge of unequal angle from it and then I worked on the fixtures. A short angle can bolt through using the two mast collar bolts and then I can use the much longer flat part of angle to affix the box section span itself which I need to be more careful with. I want to maximise the width of fixings along its length and of course not crush the box. The offset nature of the collar means that in order to get the equal distance each side of the mast, I have to measure carefully and then work out where to locate the holes. I mentioned the Russian roulette inherent in hand drilling section like this through both sides, but again the chamber proved empty and the holes lined up perfectly. I'm dry assembling the whole thing and reckon that this will be very smart. Obviously the ends of the span will need shrouds and I'm unsure as to how many or where yet. I'll get it up and then we'll experiment. But this part is done, so I hand painted the angle, and in fact some more angle I needed for another job coming up, and also the span itself. It doesn't need painting, but Alan needs some form to match his flawless function. Surely you agree. This means we can return to the mast, and these eye bolts up the top really are a blast from the past. They must have been done in 2019, weeks after my team and I bought Alan, wet behind the ears in the dark art of lifeboat transformations. I originally intended for four shrouds at right angles. We have the solid brace now and I need some of this top end space cleared so we're losing a couple of them. This clip was supposed to be nicely composed to show me quizzically deciding the fate of the eyelets and indeed which of them was for the chop but I Alan! Al! Alan! that up and instead looked like I'm performing some sort of secret mast top operation. Alas, no. And out comes the redundant bolt hanging on with cured 5200 for dear life until the very last turn. Luckily, it doesn't bond too well to steel. And now, voiceover Alex can have a short break for a swift pint and hand over to this very well-briefed chap. Now that I've got these two eyes out, there are two main jobs that I need to install up this end of the mast. And the first one is going to be actually a wraparound, fully sealed IP68 uh, LED light. That's going to be my, my main 360 degree light and then obviously that cable will run down the middle of the mast and then secondly a bit more complicated this is actually a, uh, a mount that I was using on the back of my sledge in the Arctic and it's to mount a wind generator onto I think I may have well shown you my wind generator in past episodes but anyway um, this is the mount I'm going to sort of uh, mutilate this a bit chopping off here I don't, I don't need this bent section and then I can mount it inside the mast but using the same bolt holes that I was using before and that should then give me the correct amount of um, of uh, amount of this thinner pole sticking up the top to allow the uh, the wind generator to fully rotate 
Now I know it would be a ridiculous break in tradition for me to actually finish a whole job in one episode, um, but I promise you that these are the final few bits that need to go on before I get the horizontal on for the two uh, antennas, not aerials, antennas, and then the whole mask can be assembled and put up top. I did grind the section off, but no sparks, so no fun. And again, I need to properly coat this aluminium tube to stave off corrosion. Why not steel? I didn't want the top of the mast to be unnecessarily heavy. I guess I could have used fiberglass, but I didn't. So this acid X primer is the first step, and then black once again like all its compatriots. This bent section was supposed to keep the wind generator vertical when mounted on my slanted arctic sledge rear end. And here's the LED. I've closed off the cut end with a blob of sealant and some heat shrink. With a doleful final view of the nuts and slowly curing JB Weld epoxy within the mast, I bid you farewell, but not for long. Bye.